Uh, yes, children, uh, like what we have already read about the events, prize and O level. First of all, we read out like how governor interacted with the secretary of the examination related to the conduct of O level examination in the Oxford prison for events. So that person, you know, secretary of examination is convinced and he wanted to know about like how the person, how the uh, criminal events is kind like what kind of person he is and he's told that he's a pleasant sort of person with no record of violence against him but he's only a kleptomaniac that he has a tendency to steal otherwise there is nothing you know very uh, offensive about him then we talk about uh, uh, then we have also read about the security arrangements which have been made so that the examination is conducted very smoothly in the uh, uh, in the jail so what those arrangements were, for example, number one, uh, this very person, uh, Evans, he's uh, thoroughly checked the security, uh, you know, guards, they make sure that this Evans doesn't go inside the examination with any offensive thing, for example, any razor blade or uh, any, any nail filer or anything which might prove disastrous for the criminal or for the others. So he's thoroughly checked. He has nothing with him, you know, which might prove dangerous for anyone or for the security arrangements. And then uh, as far as security arrangements are concerned, this Evans was, was kept incommunicado. Incommunicado means that he was not supposed to interact with anyone outside and no one would be able to contact him from outside. So he was kept incommunicado. Apart from this, the, uh, the place where the, uh, he was going to be, uh, where he was going to sit for examination, even that place was uh, bugged up. Like there one microphone had been installed and that microphone's connection was straight with the governor's room. Like whatever this events would be talking about, all that would be overheard by a governor while sitting in his room, right? We are talking about the security arrangements. Then, uh, you know, the, the whole Oxford prison, uh, it was thoroughly, you know, the prisons are, of course, properly locked up and all. And especially the D wing, where the examination was going to be conducted, that was uh, heavily guarded with a steel door. Okay, and that was locked up. So no one could enter this D wing where examination was going to be conducted without uh, letting that door open. And the moment, for example, even McLeary came, the door opened for his arrival. And the moment he entered, the door closed. It was locked up. And uh, there was no chance for anyone to enter or go out without the proper, you know, security check. And uh, moreover, even McLeary, when the invigilator came, he was also frisked from toe, head to toe and uh, whatever objectionable things he had in the bag, for example, the knife and all, it was taken away. Uh, we are talking about security arrangements. There, there was no lapse in the security arrangement as far as we are able to make out. But yes, yesterday when we were reading out, we were able to make out like though the security personnel, Mr. Stephens and Mr. Jackson, they were very strict about, uh, about keeping the things all safe for uh, security arrangements. But even then, you know, uh, they, were, they got a bit emotional with the events because they, uh, in the core of their heart, you know, they appreciated events for his intelligence, for his cuteness, you can say. So that's why when Evans wanted to go inside for examination with his dirty hat, they allowed him to go with that because they thought like, what can, uh, what can a dirty hat do? Uh, how can a dirty hat tamper with the security arrangements, right? So they, are, they were first the, those security uh, personnel, Mr. Jackson and Mr. Stephens, you know, they tried to, uh, what we say, they, they told him to remove that hat, but when he told them that it was his lucky charm and uh, like it was his examination and he needs a, a lucky charm and all, then they allowed him. So similarly, later on when McLeary would come, McLeary would have a rubber tube with him. Yesterday we read out like uh, when McLeary left his flat to reach the prison, then we were to told like what was written, what was kept in his bag. And today we will see when he has reached the prison, then also he will be frisked, then the items in his bag will be spoken out, will be, will be, you know, will be reading out those items. We'll see like whether those items match 
or not if they will match well and good if they don't match then it would be some signal for us okay what signal it will be we'll see to that okay now let's see so we are here on page number yeah this we had read yeah this i was uh, talking about like uh, when this you know mcleary left his flat then uh, we were told about like what he had in his bag so especially from this line which contained all that he would need for his morning duties so let's see what was there in his bag again so that bag included a sealed question paper on wallet a yellow invigilation form a special authentication card from the examination board a paper knife a bible he was to speak uh, to the women skilled that afternoon on the book of ruth and a current copy of the church times so these things he had in the bag right and earlier we had even talked about his we have even read about his dress also so even those things are very important for us to remember because those things will help us to uh, decode like what went wrong uh, with security arrangements when evans was able to escape the prison escape from the prison so easily so when he left his flat in broad street and stepped out briskly towards carfax the weatherman reported temperatures considerably below the normal for early june and a long black overcoat and a shallow crowned clerical hat provided welcome protection from the steady drizzle so the kind of dress he was wearing like black overcoat and a shallow crowned clerical hat so the, these these this kind of dress code the dress was okay for the kind of weather it was okay and uh, protection from the steady drizzle which had set in half an hour earlier and which now spattered the thick lenses of the spectacles so he was wearing thick lenses of the spectacles right so in his right hand he was carrying a small brown suitcase so these things we have already read the two hour examination was scheduled to start at 9:15 am he once was lathering his face vigorously when stephens brought in two small square tables and sat from opposite each other so here is a setting of the room and two tables were kept uh, parallel to each other or in front of each other facing each other on one table and chair he uh, wants the student will sit and on the other table uh, and chair that uh, invigilator would sit right so jackson put in a brief final appearance behave so at this time you know evans you know he was getting ready for the uh, for his examination he was shaving and all he was given the warning like behave yourself uh, right so evans turned and nodded and these jackson pointed to the pinups off so jackson was very particular that uh, this man did not have any anything offensive or anything you know which was objectionable so he told him like even remove those pin ups so ivan said like yeah i was already going to remove it now his question the chap coming to sit uh, a minister isn't he the chap coming to sit i mean so we are to keep uh, we are to be very particular we are to notice like how smart this uh, ivan is he keeps on asking the questions the kind of question he is asking here is uh, something which should have uh, alerted which should have sent a high alert to the security arrangements so he knew that who was coming he said isn't he the minister who is coming and how did you know that asked jackson quietly well i had to sign some forms didn't i and i couldn't help uh, knowing the details so evans drew the razor carefully down his left cheek and a left and left a neat spot in the white leather can i ask you something mr jackson why did they have to bug me in the cell he nodded his head vaguely to a point above the door so first thing he knew that uh, a minister is coming and now he is even knows that uh, he is being bugged up he knows that his his voice is being recorded by a microphone so he pointed towards a microphone so the point is children yesterday also we discussed this out like uh, if you are going to bug somebody up if you want to uh, if you want to see if you want to listen like what one says to record his activities then the person should not know this but here this uh, uh, prisoner knew that he is going to be bugged up so not a neat job conceded jackson so what what neat job what's not a neat job that the microphone has not been installed properly it should have been hidden from the view 
they are not they don't have honestly think i'm going to try to so it was the same like they are not uh, they don't have any faith in me they think like i'm going to run away they are taking no chances evans nobody in his senses would take any chance with you who is going to listen in so the, see the man evans is all focused okay so other people the security guards you know they are talking about the uh, irrelevant things they don't bother about the they don't bother about the, like what they have to bother about okay they should have been very uh, they should have become attentive the moment this man knew that he, a minister is coming then he asked like uh, the microphone is there then they could have become alert like how could he know this they would have done something to safeguard this thing but even then this uh, the, you know jackson kept on remaining emotional and was telling him the irrelevant things like nobody will take chance with you and that but this man evans is very focused who is going to listen in like who will listen to me when i'll be here in the examination i'll tell you who is going to listen in that it's the governor himself see he don't trust you a bloody inch and nor do i i'll be watching you like a hawk you want to so keep your nose clean so here he is given a warning that uh, whatever you will speak that will be all listened to by the governor and i'll be i'll be observing you like a hawk so you won't have any chance to run just one more thing einstein yeah what's good luck old son so then uh, in the little so here mcleary is going to enter now in the little lodge just inside the prison's main gates the reverend mcleary signed his name neatly in the visitors book and then walked side by side with a silent prison officer across the exercise yard to d wing so where he was greeted by jackson the wing's heavy outer door was unlocked and locked behind them the heavy inner door the same and mcleary was handed into stephen's keeping so get the razor mummer jackson stephen snorted will keep your eyes skinned well keep your eyes skinned clear stephen snorted again and mcleary his feet clanging up the iron stairs followed his new guide and finally stood before a cell door where stephens opened the peep hole and looked through okay now evans was being uh, sent to this place where his examination is going to be conducted so that's him sir evans facing the door sat quietly at the farther of the two tables the whole attention riveted to a textbook of elementary german grammar so when that mcleary saw evans for the first time then he found him reading the grammar book very intently Stephens looked, took the key from the its ring, and the cell lock sprang back with a thudded metallic lock. So Stephens opened the door where Evans was already sitting. So it was nine ten a.m. when the governor was switched on the receiver. He had instructed Jackson to tell Evans of the temporary little precaution. That was only fair. So that governor he told Jackson to tell Evans about the general precautions he had to take care. as if evans wouldn't spot it but wasn't it all a bit theatrical school boyish almost how on earth was evans going to try anything on today so uh, the governor thought like whatever the security arrangements they had already made they were all enough and now making this person making this evans become uh, giving him more instructions like this wouldn't it be like uh, as if we are instructing a school boy wouldn't it be too much wouldn't it be like theatrical so this kind of thinking of the governor makes us think that the governor is becoming over confident okay one should do one's duty whether it is uh, whatever its form is isn't it how on earth was evans going to try anything on today if he was so anxious to make another break why in heaven's name hadn't he tried it from the recreational block so the governor is thinking like if evans wanted to escape then he might have done so when he was in the recreational room then he had the razor with him then he was not chained up then the uh, then that room was open also from there he could have done something much easier but he hadn't and there he was now sitting in a locked cell all the prison officers on the alert two more locked doors between his cell and the yard and a yard with a wall as high as a haystack yes evans was as safe as houses so governor is like becoming over confident about his security of this man and it's not about like being over confident that was a fact like there were already two doors 
uh, uh, between his cell and the other outer outer door and moreover you know uh, outside the yard there was a very high wall like where was uh, there was no possibility that ivans would even if he wanted to run away he would not be able to anyway it won't be any trouble at all to have the receiver turned on for the next couple of hours or so but even then governor knew this knew this that though there is no possibility for ivans to run off even then he wanted to remain alert so he found he thought like he should keep the receiver on because nothing will go he won't have to suffer any loss if he would remain attentive and keep on listening to the mic to those noise voices or the sounds which would come from the cell from the microphone it wasn't as if there was going to it wasn't as if there was going to be anything to listen to was it so he thought like uh, basically though there would not be anything for him to listen to there would not be anything relevant amongst other things and even invigilators duty was to ensure that the strictest silence was observed but but still that little nagging doubt might evans try to take advantage of mcclary get him to smuggle in a chisel or row to or a rope ladder or so because they uh, somewhere or the other you know this governor also knew that this will uh, evans is very smart so he had that little nagging doubt somewhere in his heart and because of that he wanted to remain alert the governor sat up sharply it was all very well getting rid of any potential weapon that evans could have used it was all very well getting rid of any potential weapon that evans could have used but what about mcleary so evans uh, governor was you know very alert he knew that uh, uh, nothing would be with evans nothing destructive would be with evans but what about mcleary what if quite unwittingly the innocent mcleary had brought in something himself a jack knife perhaps and what if evans held him hostage with such a weapon so see up to what extent the governor was able to think and that was right also so like maybe mcleary had come with a jack knife and then what if uh, evans uh, holds him hostage and uh, is able to run off uh, right so the governor reached for the phone it was 9 12 am the examinee and the invigilator had already been introduced by stephens when jackson came back and shouted to mcleary through the cell door can you come outside a minute sir you to stephens so jackson uh, invigilator uh, the invigilator and the examinee they were both inside the room because the paper was to start at 9 10 but meanwhile the uh, governor gave some instruction to jackson and jackson told mcleary to come out of the room along with stephens stephens is also the security personnel i guess you know jackson quickly explained the governor's worries and mcleary patiently held out his arms at shoulder level whilst jackson lightly frisked his clothes so mcleary was searched okay something hard here sir ma reading glasses so he said that like there these are my reading glasses replied mcleary looking down at the spectacle case okay so what was there in his pocket somewhere there he had reading glasses in his spectacle case okay do you remember children in the initially in that paragraph where when he left that place at that time he was wearing thick lenses of the spectacles okay uh, the drizzling spattered on the thick lenses of his spectacles then what was uh, what was this uh, uh, like then this very you know then what for these uh, spectacles were yeah we were here so something hard yeah my reading glasses replied looking down at the spectacle case jackson quickly reassured him and bending down on the landing thumb flinked the catches of the suit on the suitcase so he thumb flinked the uh, suitcase he picked up each envelope in turn carefully passed his palms along their surfaces and seemed satisfied so he uh, you know uh, opened up each he held each envelope and uh, felt like what might be inside so when he was satisfied he referred uh, cursorily through a few pages of holy writ 
and vaguely shook the church times. All right, so far. But one of the one of the objects in McLeary's suitcase was puzzling him sorely. So uh, church times and the holy writ that Bible was there. So those uh, everything was okay. But there was one thing which was very confusing. What was that? Do you mind telling me why you have brought this, sir? He held up a smallish semi-inflated rubber ring, such as a young child with a waist of about twelve inches might have strugg uh, struggled into. You thinking of going for a swim, sir? So then he asked McLeary about a rubber tube which he had with him, and he asked him, like, sir, well, are you planning to go for swimming? Now, children, point is, in this description, there was no rubber tube in his bag. There, there was no rubber tube, right? But now, when this McLeary has reached the jail, then that rubber tube was there. Got it? Now, from where had this rubber tube come? As readers, we should know this. Okay, this is a hint for us. So it means that uh, if McLeary did not have the rubber tube then when he left the flat, and now when he is reached, he has got the rubber tube. What do you think? Does, does any idea come to your mind? Yes. Do you think there is something wrong? What wrong it might be? Any idea, any slightest idea. If you are a detective, if you are also trying to solve the case, because uh, you know that Evans has run away. Okay, Evans has run away, but how did he run? Who helped him? From where was he getting all the information? He was getting information not just because uh, the outsiders were helping him, but yes, some outsiders were also there. Did you guess like who was the first outsider who was helping him out? Did you guess? It was that teacher, it was that tutor who taught him German for six months. He knew that Evans did not know ABC of German, but even then he was going to appear for the examination. So if one outsider who had been coming to him daily, Okay, it might not have been without his uh, help that Evans was able to plan such big game. Our second out is this McLeary also. So this McLeary who has come as invigilator, don't you think that he might also have been uh, uh, this Evans accomplice? He might also have come as a as Evans man only, because the real McLeary did not have this, but this might be the fake McLeary. Okay, only a clue because. Number one, he, uh, when he left, then he was wearing those lenses. Okay. Uh, sorry, he was wearing the spectacles. And now we find him keeping the spectacles in the, uh, in the pocket. Earlier, he was wearing them. Now he kept them in the pocket. So that's a. And secondly, what, what else? What else? Like here, he did not have the rubber tube earlier. And now he had brought it. So the possibility is that this McLeary is the fake one. So where has the real McLeary gone that we will find out? Very sorry, sir. I didn't mean to. Uh, the embarrassment was still reddening Jackson's cheeks when he found the paper knife at the bottom of the case. Uh, I think I would better keep this though, if you don't mind, that is, sir. So Jackson took the paper knife away. But uh, what about the uh, this rubber tube, McLeary? You've got a watch. Yes, sir. I'll be telling you when to start. And again, when you've got five minutes left, all right? So McLeary says that I'll be telling you when to start. And again, when you when five minutes are left. So McLeary, there is plenty more of this kind of this writing paper. Should you need it? Silence. McLeary, now write the name of the paper, 0211 in the top left hand corner. So McLeary is given giving instruction to this boy that is Evans that he must write the name of the paper. So the name of the paper is 021-1. Then there is silence McLeary. In the top right hand corner, write your index number 313. And in the box just below that, write your center number 271, all right? So these are digits which McLeary is telling that man he wants to write. These digits are what? What do you think? So if we have already been able to make out that Evans was not really serious about the examination, 
his purpose is hardly to pass and his purpose is to escape so and the mcleary also doesn't seem to be real then whatever mcleary is saying shouldn't we bother about what he is speaking about so these digits you know in the uh, these digits might mean something okay now silence 920 am mcleary i am now going to uh, events uh, is not going to stay here is he so he is so the he wants to say like he is not going to stay here is he who is he here stephens by this time children what was like it was already decided by the security uh, security and all that the stephens would be would remain inside in the examination hall with uh, mcleary and uh, events it was like already decided and now when events saw that uh, stephens was there just standing there in front of him then he objected like uh, he should not stay here like this so he wanted to convey that he would not be able to concentrate upon writing okay and we as readers also know that he hardly knows anything about the paper okay then why is he objecting to the security guards presence in the room if he is objecting then there is something wrong and now let's see what happens mcleary i don't know about that i uh, then mr jackson's given me strict instructions to so stephen says that i have i have been instructed to remain here evans how am i supposed to concentrate on my paper with someone breathing down my neck christ sorry sir i didn't mean the governor reached for the phone jackson ah go, good get stephens out of that cell will you i think we are perhaps overdoing the things so the governor he because he he could listen to whatever was being talked in the cell so governor instructed jackson to tell stephens to come out of that room the very first mistake these people are committing now the biggest mistake you can say so they have made that stephens come out of the room because jackson again uh, governor again said that they are overdoing the things right so children yes up till here we have read page number 78 up till 78 we have done so we'll be continuing from this very page but whatever we have done earlier please read that on your own also okay and as try to be detectives and try to find out like uh, what is going on and what are the clues given to us to find out like what went wrong all right